What's up, VC? What's up, Vinyl Community? It's Dan hanging out with you, the Vinyl Geezer. So nice that you can join me once again. So, this is like two videos in two weeks, guys. These are like 2019 numbers. Unheard of. Like I said, I've got more time on my hands. Um, I keep seeing this thread popping up, and I was wondering where it came from. I finally saw Jeff over at Speaker's Corner video, and I thought... I'm going to do this one. And what it is, it's 10 records that nobody else has in the vinyl community. And so, I could possibly do that. I could squeak out probably just at about 10 that I'm sure that none of you have. Private pressings, um, strange odd bootlegs. I got a couple of Patty Smith bootlegs that are, I've never seen them and I've never seen them advertise I've never I've done Google searches upon Google searches never seen them I could show you those but what I wanted to do was I wanted to share with you some records that aren't completely inaccessible or at least the music on them is not completely inaccessible and that you could find if you did some digging and did some searching and looked long enough and waited for represses and and things like that so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to do 10 records that I've never seen posted in the VC or like on any of the Facebook groups. I haven't seen them. Now, you guys might be like, I did that. Somebody seen this. I did this. I had this record. I showed it last week. I apologize. I just thought I kind of wanted to share with you guys some stuff really that is obscure enough that most people will, will say, yeah, I've never heard of that. And maybe most of you will say, yeah, I've never heard of that. I'm interested in that. I'm going to check it out or I'm going to look for it. So with no further ado, let's just, let's start, let's start the albums. All right. So as I'm trying to figure out what to do with my channel, these are always great things to do. Contest entries, stuff like that, just to kind of get you back into the motion of things. So any other threads that you guys know that's going on, please drop them in the comments. Uh, I, like I said, I have more time on my hands and I like doing videos in the VC. I always did. I just... I was too busy. It's too busy. Anyway, um, so the first one is a synth pop record. You guys that know me are not going to be surprised at this at all. But this is from a band that I've never really heard of before. And I saw this record. I think it was in like the dollar bin at a record store here. Record store. Record store here. And it's Data. And the album is called Elegant Machinery. Now, Data has a few records out. I did a little Wikipedia search. They have a few records out, but this is the one that I happened to see, and I thought the I thought the cover was interesting. It looked like a synth pop record, it looked like a new wave or synth pop record. I like this kind of design. I respect this kind of design. And guys, it's on the Sire label. So you, if you guys have been paying attention, anything Sire, I tend to pick up and I'll hold on to it. I collect Sire. So this is a great synth pop record it's it's got a lot of pop sensibility so imagine a little more pop sensible yazoo allison moyette we have a female vocalist we have vince clark type synths and it just it works data's elegant machinery if you ever see it it's definitely worth the pickup especially because you're probably going to be given under three bucks for it so that's number one Number two, all right, this is one, um, I don't know, maybe maybe you guys shown this, I might have shown this, I don't, I don't know, I got this for Christmas last year, from my friend Gene, he's one of my best friends in the world, and I am a huge fan, and I mean huge fan, of Mr. T, and he got me this beautiful, beautiful, minty promo copy of Mr. T's be somebody or be somebody's fool. And as you can see, this hype sticker here, it says, contains, and it doesn't say the hits. They had no idea how big this album was going to be. The hits, I would say the hits, treat your mother right, I am somebody, and love each other. So this is Mr. T's Be Somebody or Be Somebody's Fool. I've never seen this shown in the vinyl community. I absolutely adore it. I love that my friend Gene got it. 
And you know, the source of the Mr. T like robot dance meme, it's from this, not from the record, but from the, the, the video, the companion show that was released. As you guys can tell, I love Mr. T. It's going to be a sad day. If I live to see Mr. T's death, it's going to be a very sad day for me. I love, I, I really adore. I may look like I'm being sarcastic. I swear I am not in any way, shape, or form being sarcastic. I, I adore Mr. T. And I always have. This next one, you guys that know me know that I am a huge fan of the cult. I am also a huge fan of the vocal styles of of uh, the cult's Ian, Astor, Ian Astorberry, Ian Astbury, uh, from the cult. He did an album with Boris. It's Boris and Ian Astbury. It's a four-song EP, and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna read the uh, the hype circuit to you. BXI is the collaboration between Boris and Ian Astbury. Astbury's iconic vocals, a perfect match. For Boris's raw and emotive songwriting style, three original BXI songs, and a cover of The Cult's Rain. So, this is great. If you're a fan of Ian Asbury at all, if you like Boris, if you like heavy music, this is great. I've never seen this shown. I've never seen this posted anywhere. BXI, Boris, and Ian Asbury. Awesome. Awesome. Love it. It's cut at 45, and it sounds just great. It really does. This next one. Okay. I'm a huge fan of a channel called Ken Tamplin's Vocal Academy. I don't know if you guys are. If you're not, you should be because he's this far out vocal coach. I think he lives in Hawaii and he's great. He's got a great Instagram presence. He's got a wonderful, wonderful page, uh, YouTube channel, YouTube page, uh, YouTube channel. I found this at a at an antique mall uh, in the middle of nowhere <laughs> and this is from the band Shout they're a Christian can you guess hair metal band and the name of this is in your face this is on the Frontline label it's a Christian label from the 80s I want to say this is from 87 or something anyway I gave $3 for it so we got the, the price tag on the back there. But this guy right here, that's Ken Tamplin. So if you guys aren't familiar with Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, I highly suggest his YouTube channel. He's a guitar player on this. I'm not sure if he did the singing, but these solos are freaking amazing. This is great hair metal if you dig that kind of thing. Shout in your face. Nice little design there. They, they flipped everything around. I've never seen this posted anywhere. I may have shown that in a video. I know I've shown this one in a video. And I know it's very likely that a lot of you will have this. And I know it's very likely that a lot of my Canadian friends will have this. But I've never seen it posted. I've never seen anybody talk about it. I would have remembered. So this band went on tour with Howard Jones. I want to say 86, 87. Of course, I would have been like 12 or 13. I was born in 75. My sister went, and she got a promo tape. You know, like a free tape they throw out in the crowd or whatever. And, yeah, the band is called Frozen Ghost. And um, this contains, a, I, I believe it's a member or two from the band Sheriff. And you guys know Sheriff. Well, this is, this is great. This is uh, proggy with a pop sensibility not too far removed from Yes. Especially 80s, yes. So, check this out. Guys, this is so good. This entire album will blow your mind. The song that you may know, and you should check this out if you haven't, is Should I See. It's, it's great. It's about censorship. And, you know, there's a lot of that 80s stuff going on with the PMRC and stuff like that. It seems like this kind of fell into that, in, into that argument for... Uh, for, for freedom of speech. So show me, or in freedom of eyes, uh, show me what should I see, they say. So anyway, Frozen Ghost, amazing stuff, well-produced, 
you guys are probably like, you, you Canadian guys are probably like, man, I've got that record. I've had that for years. I know that album. I've shown that before. How come you haven't seen it? I just, maybe you did. I don't remember. I probably would have geeked out though, because that's what I do when I see that record. I'll see it in the dollar bin. And sometimes I just want to buy up all the copies just to give to my friends. They never listen to me though. They don't. They don't listen. Anyway. Moving on. This is a, uh, this is a folk album. And it's just, it's, I'm not going to say nobody has this, but I'm going to say I've never seen it shown. And maybe it's because I don't follow you guys. I get a lot of metal channels, uh, rock, metal, punk, obscure, psych stuff. Um, I don't really buy that stuff, but I like watching those videos. I don't, I, I can enjoy the psych through you guys vicariously because I don't have the wallet for it. Um, but I don't even, I, it's kind of like, I don't want to crack that door open and walk through it. But anyway, maybe this has been shown a bunch, maybe not. Probably the guys and gals who watch my channel perhaps won't. My wife has incredible taste in music and this is a folk album. I'll just show it to you. It's Terry Callier. It's called The New Folk Sound of Terry Callier. This is the latest reissue done by Kraft. It's two records cut at Coherent. I think I think Kevin Gray did cut these from digital files. For those, let's take a look at the... Uh, I, I tend to save all of my hype stickers and throw them in the jacket. So I want to say this was cut. Yeah, Lacquer's Cut by Kevin Gray, a coherent audio. I, I believe these were cut from digital. They sound great. Trust me, plenty of. And they were also pressed at RTI. So these are these are great. It's nice thick cardboard sleeve. It's it doesn't it doesn't appear to be like a tip on. Or is it? No, it doesn't appear to be like one of those. It's not a high gloss. But what a beautiful record. What a haunting record. There's some songs on here, 900 Miles. Um, there's another song, uh, Johnny Be Gay If You Can Be. It's just fantastic stuff. And I highly recommend it. If you can get your hands on this one, this repress, I would. There's another repress floating out around there. It's back there in our jazz and folk section. And uh, it's, it's cut a little hot, and it kind of distorts. It's just, it's how it was cut. But it's still worth having. So uh, if you can get your hands on this one, I would. It's the Kraft Recordings reissue. So uh, the, the new folk sound of Terry Callier, a lot of people have on different forums and whatnot, they've called him the John Coltrane of folk. It's, it's really good stuff. So that's one, two, three, four, five five six records so i got seven eight nine ten all right so here we go all right so yeah sorry little cut there uh occasionally things happen that they just they just happen and you drop things and then you can't reach them and then you give up on it and then you realize that there's a record right here that i could talk about that i'm sure that not a lot of you have so we're just going to go from here. All right. Sorry. Jump cut. I know. I hate jump cuts, guys. That's. I think that's the first jump cut I've ever done. Anyway, let's talk about this one. So music from the Deaf Club. So San Francisco Club, the Deaf Club. Can you hear me? Look at that. Isn't that an awesome looking album? I just love that artwork. So this is from 1980. And this has, and Mazzy's probably not watching this, but He's probably been to the Deaf Club many times. It was a San Francisco uh, venue. And we have Dead Kennedys on here. KGB, The Offs, The Mutants, Pink Section, Tuxedo Moon. Just a bunch of different and obscure punk bands. So this kind of fits in. This does kick off with Police Truck by Dead Kennedys, however. It's great stuff. Great artwork. I love the the whole way this is set up. I've never seen this out. I saw this in a, in a stack of other records that I was buying. 
from a buy that one of the local record stores did, and I just had to have it. And it just had these fantastic photographs in this insert. And just phenomenal stuff. If you ever see this music from the Def Club, can you hear me? Nice little gem there. And I don't know... You, you should look it up for sure. You should look up Dead Kennedys Live, Def Club 1980. Police truck, they did a really good... It's just it's it's just a phenomenal collection of live music from there. Anyway, moving on. I don't know if you guys are a fan of the duo Low. This is an album that was released. This is a 10-inch single that was released in 2016 for Record Store Day that I found. It's Low and Scary. Low and Scary. I don't know how I don't know how this is pronounced. I got it because of this Low. My wife is a huge fan of Low. Like I said, she has all the taste. And Low is an amazing duo. I want to say they're from are they from Michigan? Are they from Wisconsin? They're somewhere in the Midwest. I know that. They're signed to Sub Pop. And it's amazing, atmospheric, noise, beautiful kind of harmonization, noise, electronics, ethereal just phenomenal stuff this is great very meditative if you ever see it low and a scary or a scary their single it's i won't let you fall and not a word it's put out by sub pop so there we go 10 inch don't see too often i don't have too many 10 inches i have three or four all right this next band i've shown this record two or three times and I'm still trying to convince you guys. Um, I know that some of you probably have this and may, may have showed it. But, like I said, I wanted these to be things that you don't see, that I, at least I haven't seen posted, or you just don't see this. And when you do, you see, you'll see like Quiet Life, maybe Tin Drum posted by Japan. I've never seen this record. This is a compilation that came out right after they released their last album, Tin Drum under the name Japan anyway and this is kind of a greatest hits collection of theirs but it looks it appears to be that a lot of this stuff is from either from Gentlemen Take Polaroids and Tin Drum perhaps some Quiet Life's kind of hard to read and I haven't listened to this album in a while but I bought this record because I had never heard of Japan, and this David Sylvian photograph, my mom had the same haircut and the same glasses. So, what is what is Japan? What are they about? They are art pop. They are art rock. They, uh, if you like Kate Bush, you know, the, the recent Kate Bush resurgence, you guys will dig Japan. They're right in that wheelhouse. So, uh, you know, different. Just different, obscure passages, time signatures, instrumentation. Their new romantics, so think of like an art pop, synth pop. Very, very in that vein of Kate Bush, Peter Gabriel, Brian Eno, that kind of stuff. Uh, definitely, if you're a fan of... Duran Duran probably lifted a lot of stuff from Japan. I love Duran Duran, but I mean, it's obvious that when you hear certain songs by Japan and you hear certain songs by Duran Duran, they're, yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to disparage the Duran Duran name for those of you that are, that are fans and I'm a fan myself, but any, any who you should check out Japan. You really should good stuff last certainly not least you guys that are fans of van morrison damian rice david gray singer songwriter kind of stuff uh, but a huge glenn Dan glenn danzig glenn hansard fan this is rhythm and repose this is i want to say glenn's first solo record 
I want to say this is right after the swell season release Strict Joy. And this is phenomenal. If you like Van Morrison, you'll love Glenn Hansard. You may know him from the movie Once. He starred in it with Marquetta Aglova, and they were the swell season. Glenn goes back to the early 90s, Dublin area. He was in a band called The Frames, which I highly recommend as well. I managed to pick up a Frames album that was a grail of mine for a long time last year. One of these new vinyl finds videos that I'll do. I'll show it to you guys. But right now I want to show you this. Rhythm and Repose. I've never seen Glenn really represented that much. He has a newer album out that came out, I want to say, in 2020. That a lot of people have been posting. And the name of it is completely escaping me right now. Anyway. I hope that you guys maybe saw some stuff that you haven't seen. And that will inspire you to listen to new music. Because that's what this whole thing is about to me. Is sharing the music that I love with you. And for uh, TKR. TKR Video Central. Your goal of 200 subs, yeah, you you kind of you kind of stomped over that goal at 471 at the making of this video, as I'm getting in right at the end. So, you guys take it easy, keep digging them records, as I always say. Sub the geezer if you haven't, give him some watches. Sub the geezer, give him some watches, eh? All right, you guys take it easy. I love you all. Stay healthy. Peace. Talk to you later.